Hey, what's going on you guys? This is Consumer Will and uh, this is episode one of In Between the Marks. I promise you as the budget increases in this blog, uh, I'll get some decent like looking marks or whatever. But for now anyways, it's uh, foamies for you. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so uh, what this um, episode is going to be all about, and I'm going to continue to kind of do it as uh, um, the show I'm going to call is uh, In Between the Marks. Um, I'm going to keep everything RC sailing related. Uh, we're going to talk about different things, rules. I'm going to have interviews and stuff like that with various personalities in the hobby. Um, so basically for the first episode, I'm going to talk a bit about myself, uh, a bit about uh uh, the, the RC hobby itself, uh, sailing hobby itself, and how I got into it and stuff. And uh, I'm going to make a couple comments here and there about, uh, I guess, the Dragon Force uh, 65 too as well. So um, I guess, where do I start? It's uh, I've been doing this for five years, I would say. Um, got totally hooked. You know, I picked up my first boat, which was... Uh, actually, my first boat was the uh, Racing Sparrow. I built it out of balsa wood. Um, I did, you know, you might see some videos there where I molded out a keel for it and uh, and did the dual rudder thing for it and all that. So that was my basically first official RC sailing boat that I've completely built. Um, sailed okay, but it was just kind of, you know, it, it was my first time built anyways. Um, from there, I just got totally hooked. You know, I was, uh, I was in Sea Scouts way back. So, um, so basically... Uh, I, I was kind of into like the whole sailing thing, you know, we sailed around the Gulf Islands here off of uh, the Pacific coast here and uh, I just had a blast, you know, and dolphins on the bow and stuff like that. Um, so I, I've always had this kind of fascination with sailing. So, you know, as my, as a hobby kind of progressed, I picked up a Victoria, totally, you know, uh, built that one out and uh, uh, sailed it. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I just like, you know, you can tell by my channel, I like kind of customizing boats and kind of making them kind of interesting to sail and all that. Uh, so uh, along came the Dragon Force 65 and I thought, well, great, this is a boat that um, I can take uh, to various places and sail. And uh, and you've seen my my videos on the unboxings and stuff like that. So uh, I am a fan of the class. I'm a fan of uh, the Dragon Flight 2 as well. Um, let's see now, like, I mean, through the fact of racing these little boats, I've met so many great personalities. And to me, that's what the hobby is really all about. Like, I mean, you meet a lot of great folks and everyone's got an opinion about something like that. Um, I guess, uh, you know, like a comment that I heard tonight was uh, uh, Dragonosis. So uh, honestly, I, I probably have Dragonosis because <laughs> I'm a fan of the class. Having said that, um, after adopting the class is my favorite thing to sail right, you know, uh, I actually took on uh, international one meter boat racing too as well. So, um, you know, the class definitely helped me kind of uh, step into uh, a, a way bigger world um, of RC sailing and uh, a lot more competitive boat, a lot more tuning require requirements and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm just really thankful for the Dragon Boats themselves to kind of give me that basic kind of sail tuning and and, and racing knowledge because up until the actual um, uh, Dragon class, I never really understood how to do like the, like the racing real, rules of sailing and stuff like that. Starboard, you know, uh, windward, leeward and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I have to th be thankful for that. Uh, what else? personalities i have met a ridiculous amount of really cool people in this hobby and um you know just recently i i'm talked with a mechanic who worked on the blue angels he's retired now and stuff and uh he's one of the mechanics with the blue angels um uh ron holland he's a uh he's of luxury yacht fame you know he lives like right here in like the west coast area here right so um you know you meet these folks and it just makes the hobby that much more enjoyable uh that much more kind of uh entertaining and and uh you know like it is a sport 
So uh, I would say most regardless that I get to, uh, you're doing 10,000 steps every day. And you know, you're walking back and forth and sure, it seems like you're walking the boat, but your level of concentration and all that, um, yeah, it's no wonder people actually go into the walk off the dock or whatever, what have you. So, um, you know, and of course the hobby's taking me into like, uh, kind of like a little hobby stream of things too as well. So, uh, enough about me. I'm going to, this is episode number one. I'm going to, uh, do feature products. I'm going to do, um, have people on the show to, uh, interview, make comments with, you know, just talk about things. Um, so stay tuned. I'm going to hopefully, uh, I'm going to try and do one episode a month. So, um, we'll go from there. Um, now one thing I want to talk about, and uh, this is kind of, I guess you could talk it up in, in the tips and whatever section. Um, there was uh, a lot of talk recently by, uh, by people, you know, oh, should I, you know, with the Dragon Force 65, should I seal the, um, seal the trunk, uh, you know, do that, uh, reinforcing thing because apparently there's this stuff that's going around where all their, um, the cue box area tends to crack and stuff like that. So this is my take on it. Um, basically, you know, I've had this version six since uh the unboxing video that you see uh and i would say that's a good two three years i guess and i have not sealed that trunk at all i basically took it out of the boat or excuse me took it out of the kit i put the keel on and set it everything up and i sailed it and ever since that day i've sailed it as is um to this day knock on wood uh the keel box is still without any cracks um I know that uh, some folks, what they've been doing is they'll they'll get the model, and as soon as they get the model, the very, very first thing they do is, oh, I don't want keel, keel cracks, so they go and seal it and stuff. You know what? Just just get your boat ready. Get out there and enjoy it first. If it develops a crack, then do the repair, right? Because what my mentality around it is that if you take the model brand new like that, and and do all this reinforcing around that keel trunk area what's going to happen is you've now put uh basically a lot of pressure around the keel box area here and you've stiffened it so uh what happens is so now you've created leverage area and if it's not going to crack here it's going to crack here now because you've reinforced this whole other area right so that's my thought behind it. Also guys, like honestly, it it all uh, kind of is part of taking care of your boat too as well. So um, I don't know how many times I've seen it off the dock where a guy will drop their boat, like the moment the bulb hits the water, they will release their mass and the boat will slam into the water at you know an additional 10, 11 inches uh, before it actually the hull touches the water kind of thing and, and slams down or, you know, they're, um, they're storing it in like really warm areas where, uh, the moment they take it inside or something, something like that, it'll cool down. And that constant, you know, they are plastic and they're mass produced. So the constant say warming and cooling of that plastic perhaps could be an issue. So, um, you know, at the very end of the day, like, I mean, that's just my, my opinion on it. And, you know, you guys, like, when you're racing, I think anytime you say racing, um, there's a certain cost that's going to be involved. Like, the Dragon 465 is the lowest cost RC sailing boat that you could probably, that you could basically race. So, um, yes, the kit only costs, say, 200 bucks. Uh, US, but um, for whatever reason, people don't want to go out and spend 50 or $60 on a new hull. They'd much rather um, do all their repairs on on their original hull, and they might get it to 80%, 90% of what it used to be. Um, 
So anyways, if you, you know, if you have it in your budget to, to get a new haul, I totally recommend just getting a new haul, start fresh. Um, you know, you have much more enjoyment with it from there. So anyways, that's, uh, that's my take on it. Thanks for watching and, uh, look forward to some more episodes here. I, I'm going to keep them, uh, probably within the 10 minute range and, um, we'll just go from there. All right. Thanks for watching.